What's going on everybody? C4 here and today we are back into our one-off connected franchise mode series which we did in Madden 17. You know, right around this time where Madden's the pulse of Madden is is barely beating if you know in this case for Madden 18 it's probably been on life support ever since basically November. But we're going to be taking some one-off connected franchise modes and just testing them, putting them through the ringer. So if you guys have any suggestions of kind of like team builders that you want to see me try, let me know in the comment section below. Today, we are once again going to be taking a look at an all-bust team. We're in the combine draft mentality. We're getting prepared for that. So let's take a look at a team built up of all busts. What can they do with us in control for a game and ultimately what can they do with the sim we all know the sim is going to be just absolutely savage with them but looking at our roster we're going to start the quarterback spot we have a couple qbs here we have paxton lynch who's selected by the first round denver broncos ej Manuel, first round for the bills christian ponder first round with the vikings none of those guys got on but ultimately we're going to be using johnny manziel once again trying to you know kind of rejuvenate his nfl career going to the spring league we gave him his base rookie stats from Madden 15, I believe it was, and he will be our starter uh, on the running back spot. It was a little bit tougher to find actual running backs that were bust, so we have a bunch of second round picks. So we have Tavon Austin, who's a second round pick of the Rams, converted from wide receiver. Still pretty much is a wide receiver, but you know, just for the fact that we, we were struggling to find running backs, he was classified as a running back on the Rams, he is there. We have Bishop Sankey, who's a second round pick for the Tennessee Titans, and Michael James, who was a second round pick. I honestly can't remember what team picked him in the second round. I want to guess the 49ers. Uh, but yeah, hottest girlfriend alive. But we're going to be probably rocking and rolling with Tavon Austin. Uh, at the wide receiver spot, we have Kemba Wright, who was a first-round pick from the Tennessee Titans. He's probably like one of the few players on this list that you say, like, is he a bust? Is he not a bust? I think he's his stats have never lived up to his first-round potential. But he's been a solid contributor and debatably had one of his more productive seasons with the Bears last year. We have Philip Dorsett, who was a first-round pick of the Colts. He's been... You know, now he's on the Patriots. Michael Floyd, who's never lived up to his first round hype, had some off the field issues. Laquan Treadwell, who at one point in time was the best wide receiver two years ago, and he has done absolutely nothing for the Minnesota Vikings. We have Perryman, who basically you know skyrocketed in the first round conversation after a blazing, I think it was like a 4 2 7 40 at his pro day, selected by the Ravens. He hasn't done much. And then we have Kevin White, who again dominated the combine, draft stock skyrocketed, got selected by the Bears, has been unable to stay healthy. He's another one. I don't want to call him a bust yet just because literally all these other guys have had some injuries, but they've also been on the field a lot and haven't made the most of their opportunities, whereas we haven't really seen what Kevin White can bring. So maybe uh, 2018 will be different. Tight end spot was kind of tough to grab some tight ends here. We got Max Williams, who was actually one of my favorite draft, uh, favorite tight ends what, it been three years ago, two, three years ago, uh, coming out of Minnesota. Kind of remind me a little bit of Dallas Godart for this year's draft class, but for some reason he just hasn't been able to get uh, much room in the depth chart there. At Baltimore, then again, they have like 13 tight ends. Uh, we have Brandon Pettigrew, who was a first-round pick from the Detroit Lions a way, way long time ago. Never really caught on. And we have Troy Nicholas here, who was a second-round pick of the Cardinals and hasn't really done a whole lot. Offensive line, we got a bunch of busts. Greg Robinson, first-round pick. Flowers, first-round pick. Abouye, first-round pick. All these guys are incredibly average at best. Left guard, we have Lakin Tomlinson, first-round pick. Josh Garnett, a first-round pick. And Jonathan Cooper, a first-round pick. Again, Average. I'm actually here both these guys here on the 49ers. So I guess they're trying to, you know, tap into un on some potential there. Uh, we have Cam Irving here, bust for the Cleveland Browns. Right guard Chance Warmack now on the Philadelphia Eagles has been incredibly average at best. And a right tackle, we have Michael Orr, who had obviously you know, the blind side movie and stuff like that. He was supposed to come in as a, you know, a terrifying tackle. I had a couple all right years, but overall, I definitely think you could probably slide the bust tag on him. Again, I'd say he might be one of those guys on this entire team that it might be a little too harsh to say that. Just definitely the, the back end of his career has not been good. Uh, the defensive front, we have Deion Jordan, who obviously you know got caught with them Lane Johnson supplements. Uh, kind of a bust. Quinton Couples had a really good combine. Never really caught on with the Jets. Bust. Defensive end, we have Tyson Alu-Alu, who's a first-round pick from the Jags. Again, nah, nothing special. Marcus Smith from the Philadelphia Eagles was terrible. One of the worst picks I've ever seen the Eagles make along with Danny Watkins. Bust. I think he's on the Seahawks now. Uh, we have Steven Paia, who was a second-round pick but has the bench press record and it's not really done much. Robert Kandici was a first-round pick, hasn't done much. Dayton Jones was a, might have been a first, could have been a second-round pick. Nothing. I think he was a first-round pick. Uh, then we have Phil Taylor, who was a first-round pick from the Browns and did absolutely nothing. So a bunch of busts. Uh, the linebacking core, we have, we're going to slide someone over on the depth chart. 
Uh, we have John Bostic, who's a second-round pick. I liked him out of Florida as a big-time hitter, but, uh, you know, hasn't really caught on. Same goes with Arthur Brown, second-round pick. Stephon Anthony was actually a first-round pick. They suck. These guys are trash. Right outside linebacker, we have Jarvis Jones, who's definitely one of the more surprising busts because he was that dominant at the University of Georgia as an edge rusher, and the fact that he's never caught in the NFL was very surprising. I thought he was going to be dominant. Maybe he tried him defensive. Maybe it's going to take for one team just to gamble on him there. And we have Shane McClellan here with a first-round pick, and he's just been average. Uh, the second day, we have Eli Apple, who looks like an absolute head case for the Giants. was one of the most surprising picks two years ago in the first round. Definitely the biggest reach, and he is looking trash. Uh, DJ Hayden was a first-round pick. Surprise pick from the Raiders. He sucked. D. Miller was a first-round pick. He's now cut. He's a free agent. He's trash. Uh, and the safeties, uh, we have Calvin Pryor, another guy I bought in his hype. I wanted Philly to draft him a couple years ago. He struggled to stay on rosters. Nate Allen was actually drafted by Philly in the second round. He's bounced around a bunch. Had some couple decent seasons, but ultimately uh, he's been average. A little too early to say Jarrell Peppers is going to be a bust, but we just kept him on the roster because we're using the Browns, and it, it might be going that way. But more so, we have Matt Elam from Florida again. I bought into the Gator buy, so that I thought he was going to be pretty solid, and he never got on with the Ravens. Kickers, Roberto Aguayo, that was always going to be easy. And at punter, we're going with Brian Anger, just because he was a third-round punter, and he's never made the Pro Bowl, never made an All-Pro or anything like that. The fact that he made a third-round investment, he's been a solid punter, but the fact he made a third-round investment in a punter, you would expect him to be, like, the best in the league. And that is not the case. So there is our team full of busts. We're going to play the opening game of the season just to, you know, kind of see what's going on, and then we'll send the rest of the year. It's going to be probably pretty terrible. We're probably going to get two wins, including if we win the first game, but... That's the point of doing this. Let's see what this thing can do. Maybe miracles will happen with Johnny Manziel back in the league, back on the Cleveland Browns. Let's get it. Oh! Oh! Low-key Tavon Austin is real cheesy. Running through that. I mean, this is a tough game for your first opponent. Going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers, especially in the sim. Just like that. 47 yards for Tavon Austin. Let's go. This is like The Replacements. You guys ever seen that movie The Replacements with Shane Falco? That was a dope movie. That's pretty much what this is. And these guys here, this is their Super Bowl. They're balling out. Oh, what a run. What a catch and grab. 7-9 for 88 yards right now on this drive for John Menzel. Our defense is what's been more impressive. Just three and outs after three and outs. I feel like... I mean, we can't say anything right now because the second half, this could just all get blown up right now but it's looking i'm liking i'm vibing with this team right there hey wide open Pettigrew, both feet in up to the seven johnny medzel is slinging that rock this drive here started on the one this is currently trying to cap off a 99 yard drive and i will say without a shadow of a doubt Tavon austin as a running back is very very cheesy even though we don't have him in right now Let's see what sank he can do what that sank do oh and he and he's not in. That looked like he, if he wasn't a bust, that cut would have took him uh, right into the end zone. Because it looked like he just ran into the back of my wide receiver there. Oh, this is not good. This is not going to work. Or is it? And he's in for his second touchdown, Tavon Austin. We found a stud, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the o -line in 71. 71 was hype. Because this damn team, this replacement's. Is going off. Cam Irving couldn't believe it. Oh, he's off again. Tavon. Tavon's a beast. I'm getting him like any other. If there's ever a scenario where I can grab, we're going to keep going here. We have to shoot the clock on because we're going to try to win. We usually get cheese and finesse out of these type of games. But Tavon Austin is real sick. Oh, no. Thank you, Johnny. Johnny Manziel. There must have been some. Something that hard white on the football because through that mass of bodies, he was able to track that. You know what I'm saying? You got them ticks. He was smelling. He was smelling that. You know, you got that that spidey sense, but for drugs that Johnny Manziel possesses, that's what happened. That must have been sprinkled on the football. This was another. This yeah. This drive here actually started at the one yard as well. So we're trying somehow, some way, to orchestrate two 99-yard drives. Throw that one away. Look at that. That's a smart, educated move by Johnny Manziel. Try to work say two 99 yard drives to try to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we're bringing it to you live right now. Live and uncut. Like Johnny Manziel likes his, you know, the yayo. yo Alright, we're going to send Perryman deep. No safety help. All he is is fast. That would be great. You know what? I'm actually just 
Ultimately, if we could somehow creep our way back into field goal range, Aguayo has like 90, 90 kick power. I don't know what the wind is. There's like a seven wind. I don't know if we're kicking into the wind or not. But we're milking this. It's almost a two-minute warning. I feel like if we can get like even five yards here, we should be fine. Right there. Max Williams across the middle. Oh, he's just, he's just going to go ahead and get the first down. That's what he's going to do. He's, send that. Send that to your Lord and Savior. Page that. All right. 21. Down the 21. Make them burn all their timeouts. I don't care. I'm going to milk this one. This team sucks. This is a 60. I think they're, ironically, a 69 overall team. Going up against one of the best teams in Madden. And we usually get stomped. I can get stomped sometimes in the sim by, like, the worst team. I can have a 90 overall team. Like, I'm, a, I'm on the other end. I'm the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm the team that's loaded with superstars. And I'm getting bum-pounded by this. Getting tushy-touched. Oh my god, Tavon Austin. Even though he has that fumble, he probably shouldn't be, you know, using the juke sticks, the trick sticks in the middle of the field. Um, it's him. This is this. He's the reason why. Obviously, our defense has done an outstanding job holding the Pittsburgh Steelers to only seven points. But Tavon Austin right now is getting the game ball. Unless he fumbles it here, which if that's the case, I'm going to be very upset. But look at him just battling. We're running up the middle. And he is just fighting for every goddamn inch because this is the team that no one thought would make it. This is a team of guys that were tossed away to the side with rich. They were rich when they got tossed away to the side because most of them had that first first round guaranteed contracts. But Tavon Austin walks in untouched for his third touchdown of the game. That should seal it. What a monster. Oh, he's got to get... Oh, my God. He, no, he's going to get caught. I'm going to try to get four TDs. Look at that. 19 carries, 145 yards, three touchdowns for Tavon Austin. And you better believe, ah, oh, he's probably going to get pulled right now because he's tired. If not, we're going to give one more C4, we're going to give him a C4 special attempt. He does, he's earned it. He's deserved it. I mean, I like Tavon Austin when he's coming out of West Virginia. I bought into the hype of Tavon Austin, Geno Smith, uh, Stedman Bailey. It never worked out. Let's just see what's Bishop Sankey saying about this. Oh, he, okay. Okay. Nice little, nice little gainer there. We're going for it. We're the team of the, we're the deplorables over here. So we're going to, we're going to hit them with the coach suggestion uh, halfback zone run. We're we'll quickly going to audible to double flares. Get to the line! Oh, and we get sacked, but it does not matter. Because the team of deplorables is able to upset. The biggest upset you're going to see all season. The team of bust beats the Pittsburgh Steelers. 21-14, to led by Tavon Austin. 145 yards, 3 TDs on the day. 150 yards. Clean game from Johnny Menzel. Like his life. It is clean on and off the field. So what we're going to do here, fellas, is we're going to pop out. We're going to send the rest of this season. I'm going to pose a question at the end of the video, and that's going to be it. And here we are at season's end after the massive opener, and we were not able to capitalize on the mental. We went 8-8 eight eight is not bad. I'll tell you that right now. 8-8 eight eight for a team that was 69 overall. I will take that every day of the week. Johnny Menzel, almost 3,900 yards, 27 TDs, 13 picks. Only 41 sacks given up. That is simply ridiculous. I've had offensive lines in my realistic rebuild that no one is below like an 85, and they've given up 60-some sacks. So that is outstanding for Johnny Menzel. Running the ball, we got 1,200 yards, 11 TDs for Tavon Austin, 13 touchdowns for Bishop Sankey. That is that is absurd. Uh, we got 750 yards, 5 TDs for Mac Williams. We got 1,000 yards, 7 TDs for Rashad Perriman, 1,000 yards, 6 TDs for Kendall Wright, 558 and 3 for Philip Dorsett. Uh, what do you got in the off? I mean, like, who didn't give up a sack here? Who actually played? Cam Irving didn't give up a sack from center. Chance Womack, like, that is... Outside of Greg o. Robinson, that is very good protection from a team worth of bust. 116 tackles, two sacks for John Bostic. 107 from Matt Elam. We got 14 sacks from Quentin Couples. Eight from Deion Jordan. Six and a half from Jarvis Jones. Two picks as well. Great year from him. Four sacks there from Kendichi. Three picks for DJ Hayden. Two for Jones. Two for Arthur Brown. A couple sacks there as well. But ultimately, man, that is... Like, this is very impressive. 8-8 eight and eight with this team. I'm proud of this. I'm proud. Of this. So what I pose to you guys is... I'm, you know, I get a couple different ideas for these one-offs. That's that's the key here. One-off connected franchise mode. Would you want me to see me, like, kind of make this into a rebuild style, if you will? Like, maybe, you know, not in one video. Not a big hour-long video. But maybe for this one, I'd be doing an all-bus team. Maybe I bring it to you in five parts, and I try to win the Super Bowl with these teams. Like, try to play these teams, control them, and, and build it that way. I can do out-of-position teams like this. 
So more so just a different approach than the one-offs. Or if you guys just like it in these little short one-off type videos, I have plenty of ideas, so that is also very, very feasible. So let me know what you guys want to see in the comment section below, just to try to bring something here new and different and, you know, kind of rejuvenate an old series from Madden 17, just so that there's not just, you know, strictly draft content and off-season uh, content here on the channel. So thank you. Looking for some feedback. As always, it's your first time stopping by. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.